All right, in this video, we're gonna look at how to factor sums or differences of cubes. And this is one factoring technique that just does not go away. So you need to make sure you get this down because you'll need it for the rest of your math career. So first, let's look at what the pattern is. And you basically just have to memorize it and apply it correctly. So a difference of cubes is when you have two terms of the form a cubed minus b cubed. And this is gonna factor into a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And then a sum of cubes is when you have two terms that are both perfect cubes summed together and that factors into a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. Okay, so the hardest thing is for students to remember this pattern. So I'll just explain to you kind of what works for me. And if you like it, go with it. So anytime you have a cubed and b cubed, first get the form down, meaning it's going to factor into a binomial and a trinomial. So the first factor has two terms always, an a and a b. And then the second factor, notice it has an a squared and a b and a b squared, okay? And every single term in the second factor is squared or quadratic, degree two, because this is a squared, this is b squared, and then, then this has one a and one b, so it's degree two. Now we have to fill in the signs. And to help you remember how to fill in the signs, you can think of SOAP. And SOAP stands for same, opposite, and always positive. So notice, if you have a difference of cubes, for example, so a cubed minus b cubed, we're basing it off of this original sign here. So the first factor would have the same sign, so it would have subtraction. Then we would have the opposite sign, so addition. And then the last one's always positive, addition as well. And that matches what we have up here. Now, what about for addition? So I'm gonna erase this, and then we're gonna fill in the signs for addition. Just think soap to yourself, okay? So if this was addition, then we would have the same sign, opposite sign, and last one is always positive. And that matches exactly what we see up here. So if you remember the basic structure, that the first factor is a, b, then a squared, a, b, b squared, and then use soap to help you fill in the signs, you should be good to go. All right, another helpful thing to remember is that this second factor is going to be prime, meaning it will not factor further. There are some exceptions. Um, if originally, like a cubed minus b cubed is a difference of squares and a difference of cubes at the same time, you actually need to factor it as a difference of squares first. Um, and then if you don't follow that direction, that second factor may break down more, but it doesn't come up too often. And I'll do an example in a general factoring strategy video to show you that. Okay, so let's just go through some examples to get started. And as you get more comfortable, you can probably start doing more of these steps in your head. But to begin with, I'll just write everything out. So example, we're just going to factor, factor away. So first one is x cubed minus 8. Okay. Identify what A is, identify what B is, and then from there, we're gonna apply the pattern. So A is equal to X. Remember, this is B cubed, right? So it's A cubed minus B cubed. So to figure out what B is, you have to think what's the cube root of eight, right? What cubed gives me eight? So B is two. Don't worry about the minus sign. The minus, all the pluses and minuses get taken care of with soap, right? When you think same, opposite, always positive. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to write out the pattern one more time. The more you write it out, you're just going to memorize it faster. It harms no one. So a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill in. So a minus b, that's going to be x minus 2. Then I have a squared, so that's going to be x squared plus a b. x2, that's weird. We write 2x plus b squared. That's four. And then we're done. I'm going to box it. 
And there's my beautiful factorization of x cubed minus 8. Don't worry about having to check if this factors. It won't. Just think to yourself, if you went through the hassle of having to learn this difference or sum of cubes formula, it better do the job completely, meaning it better factor completely, and it does. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at another example here. We have 27m cubed plus 125n cubed. Okay, so let's first identify what a and b are. Okay, so remember, this is a cubed plus b cubed. So what cubed gives me 27m cubed? We'll just think, what's the cube root of 27m cubed? It's going to be 3m. And then similarly, what would b be? b would be the cube root of 125n cubed, so 5n. And remember the pattern for a cubed plus b cubed, you're going to have a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay, so let's fill everything in. So a plus b, that's going to be 3m plus 5n. And then right here, I want you to be really, really careful. A lot of students forget. If you have a squared, I have to square the 3 as well as the m. So that's going to become 9m squared. Okay, watch out for that. I'm going to draw these eyeballs so you know to pay attention. Okay, next is minus ab. So a times b, that's going to be 15mn plus, and then be careful again, what's b squared going to be? b squared is going to be... 25m squared. Did you remember? Did you remember that time? All right, and then now we're done factoring. So you can see, like, as long as you know ooh, the formula, it's not too difficult. Good. Okay, let's move on to another case. Example C, we have 8K cubed plus 1. All right, what is A equal? So A is 2K and B is 1. All right, now if you want to live on the edge a little and you feel like you're ready to just go for it, you can set up your parentheses, right? And then you know it's going to be AB. So you would just write 2K1. This is going to be A squared, which is 4K squared. AB is 2K. And then B squared is 1. Okay. And then you don't have to write out this whole part if you're already pretty comfortable with the pattern. Okay. Now let's go ahead and fill in the signs. So you can use soap to do that, right? So this was addition. So just think to yourself, same, opposite, always positive, and you're done. Let's box that one up. Okay. Next example, let's take things to the next level. Example D, we have 2y cubed minus 54z cubed. Now you might be looking at it and say, uh-oh, I can't figure out what A and B are because there's no nice cube root of two, nor is there a nice cube root of 54. And that's because we haven't factored out the greatest common factor yet. So before you start applying some sort of formula or factoring technique, remember the very, very first step to any factoring problem is to take out that greatest common factor. Well, what can I take out? from 2y cubed and 54z cubed. Well, I can take out a two. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I have two times y cubed minus, and then now I have, ooh, 27z cubed. That looks much better. So when you factor, you're just gonna focus on the y cubed minus 27z cubed, and that two is just gonna hang out and come along for the ride. So a is equal to y, and then b is gonna be equal to 3z. Right, And then don't worry about the pluses or minuses. The soap is going to take care of that. So don't ever put a minus sign when you're deciding what A is or what B is. Okay, so the pattern, remember, I'm going to have 2 
I have my binomial, I have my trinomial, and it's going to be A minus B. Here, I'll write it up here very light. So A minus B, A squared plus AB plus B squared. Okay, so A minus B is going to be Y minus 3Z. A squared is going to be Y squared plus AB, Y times 3Z. That would look weird. We're going to write 3YZ. Typically, you want to alphabetize your variables. And then plus B squared. Do you remember what you need to be careful about with B squared? It needs to be a 9Z squared. Okay, and that's it. That's our final answer right there. But just don't forget the 2. It would be wrong if you didn't have the 2. Bravo, very nice. Okay, last one. We have example E. Z to the sixth plus Y to the sixth. Okay, now remember this is the section on sum or difference of cubes. So you have to think to yourself, something cubed plus something cubed needs to give me z to the sixth and y to the sixth. So just think of the cube root of each of them or divide the exponent by three. So you should be able to recognize that a is z squared and b is y squared. I'll write that out here. So a is z squared, b is y squared. Okay, and then let's write out the pattern. So we're going to have a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay, so from here, a plus b, that's going to be z squared plus y squared times, now a squared is z squared squared. So that's going to become z to the fourth minus AB, that would be Z squared Y squared, or if you want to alphabetize, you could write Y squared Z squared, plus, and then B squared, now be careful, so B squared is Y squared squared, so that's going to be Y to the fourth, and then this is completely factored here, okay, good, now I did mention that you need to be careful if you have something that's both a difference of cubes and a difference of squares. So if you had, for example, z to the sixth minus y to the sixth, you could think of it as a difference of squares if you thought of it as a difference of squares then it would be z cubed squared minus y cubed squared. Or you could think of it as a difference of cubes. Which would mean it would be z squared cubed minus y squared cubed. So does it matter which way you factor it first? Well, if you want to completely factor it, the more natural way to get to the correct answer is to factor it as a difference of squares first. And I actually, I'll show you why right now. Why not? So if you do a difference of squares first, then you're going to end up with z cubed minus y cubed times z cubed plus y cubed, right? It factors into conjugate pairs. And then from here, what would you do? Well, notice the first factor is a difference of cubes. So that factors into z minus y times z squared plus zy plus y squared. And then the second factor is a sum of cubes. So I can factor that as well into z plus y, z squared minus zy, plus y squared. And then I can, usually you want to list out the shorter factors together in the front. So I'd end up with z minus y, z plus y, and then z squared plus zy plus y squared times z squared minus zy plus y squared. And that's completely factored. Now what if I factored it instead as a difference of cubes first? 
So what if instead you did z to the sixth minus y to the sixth, and then I factored it into, now if I'm thinking it, uh, of it as a difference of cubes, then I'm thinking of a as z squared, right? And b as y squared. So how would it factor? It would factor into z squared minus y squared times z to the fourth, opposite sign, z squared y squared, and then always positive, plus y to the fourth. Now compare that with what we know the correct answer is. So the correct answer is what we boxed up here, right? This is the correct factorization. Can we get there from what we have here? Well, I can see, all right, I can factor that z squared minus y squared and get z minus y times z plus y, no problem. But I'm left with figuring out how do I get from z to the fourth plus z squared y squared plus y to the fourth and factor it like we had above. And the answer is you have to add and subtract a term and it's not a very natural or intuitive process, okay? So you can get there. But word of advice, when you're in a scenario for something that you're trying to factor is both a sum, or excuse me, is both a difference of squares and a difference of cubes, you wanna just go ahead, factor it as a difference of squares first, and then it'll more naturally factor completely. Okay, that doesn't come up that often, but word of advice in case you do run into this tricky little scenario. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. It helps support my channel and stay tuned for more factoring videos.